It's the 24th of September 1944 and just after midday over southwest Germany. Near Ludwigshafen, German fighters spot a British aircraft. Unusually, it's flying in daylight and alone. They will later report firing warning shots as the plane first climbs, then disintegrates in a steep dive. None of the 23 crew and passengers will survive. Das war das Fenster unserer Küche. In the tiny village of Nachterhof at the time, Willi Wingert Zahn was only a small boy. He describes his family watching in horror as the crash unfolded. His grandfather, parents and sisters, he says, ran around in panic as they heard shots and saw a large aircraft in flames. He points out where one of the plane's wings narrowly missed the family farmhouse. Royal Air Force Dakota Kilo Golf 653 should never have been anywhere near Germany. It was meant to be heading from Pershore in Worcestershire to Sardinia, a stopover on the way to Karachi, where its 20 Canadian passengers would move on to Burma. So why was the plane so far off course? Probably because of poor weather and visibility and rudimentary navigation tools. In those days, just a map and, and, a, and, a, and a watch to check the time, and that's about it. Nowadays, we have all GPS, uh, smartphones, and electronic devices. In a different Germany, in a different century, the RAF Dakota crash victims are now being honored. Where they died, the local community led by its mayor has paid for a permanent memorial. They have given their lives, says Franz Adam, for liberation and freedom from oppression. This is something that we must never forget. A broken aircraft wing tops the rust-coloured metal edifice. On it, the names of the two British and one Australian who made up the crew. Also, the 20 Royal Canadian Air Force passengers. That if those young men had been able to project themselves forward to this day, 77 years later, let me tell you that they would be standing here just as proud of you as you are of them. Relatives of the Dakota crash victims have also come to Germany. Yeah, up's easy. Down's trickier. Patricia Hunter's uncle, Royal Canadian Air Force Corporal Howard Hunter, was a passenger. There's a Dakota exactly like his at a German airfield close to the French border. The seats would just be benches or canvas seats, nothing like we think of air travel, and very few windows. Uh, you wouldn't really know what was going on as a person on that plane. I think there were 15 that flew that day, and only the one my uncle was on didn't come home. Oh, how terrifying. You know, young, young men, all crammed in here, and on their way to India as well, which, you know, is no, no quick jump, is it? It's quite a long flight. The World War II crash site is only one of nearly 30 located by former Dutch Marine Eric Wieman. You're bringing history to life again, yeah? Tell the stories of these men again, and, uh, yeah, Normally the story in a few years without witnesses, the story is forgotten. As an 11-year-old, Alphonse Meckel was among the first at the Dakota crash scene. Gruesome images of death and destruction have never left him. But then that's war, he says. Gerhard Langenstein is now 88 and can also not forget what he saw. Every day, he says, I cycle past the crash site and I always think of those 23 men. I personally believe it's important to have a memorial here. This is an exposed spot in beautiful countryside and I think people need reminders to prevent such things happening again. Rob Oliver, Forces News, 
Nachterhof in southwest Germany. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.